We're continuing to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Georgetown, Kentucky, as we get to visit with Chris Oliver, who is the head football coach of the Georgetown Tigers. Coach 10-2 and two last season, another Mid-South title, another trip to the playoffs for the program, two playoff wins as well, and you make it into the NAIA semifinals, losing only to Northwestern, who at the time was defending national champion as well. So, Coach, pretty good season. Tell us a little bit about 23. Yeah, it was it was a really good year, and obviously we wanted to win two more games, and and we didn't quite get that done, and we ran into a really good team out in in Northwestern, and and, and uh, on a really really cold day for a for a bunch of guys from our neck of the woods, uh, but we had a great season, and really proud of our guys, and and you know it was obviously year two for for myself as you as you alluded to, and. You know, just really been impressed with how our kids have bought into what we've been trying to do within the program. And, and you know, it was a phenomenal year. And, and you know, we kind of got a wake-up call. We went down to Reinhardt a few weeks into the season. And obviously, Reinhardt's a phenomenal football team, conference champions in, in their own conference that they ended up there. But, you know, we had a day where we are playing a really good football team at their place. And, you know, we had a couple score lead at halftime and, and we let that one get away from us and, you know, not trying to take anything away from what they did because they're a great football team. But we left there feeling like, man, we we uh, we had that in our grasp and we didn't finish the job to get that done. And then we had a bye week and that was a long bye week. Let me tell you, uh, you know, that, that's that's tough to, to take that bus ride home and then, you know, go through your week of preparation and sit there on a bye and not get a chance to play that next week with that with that taste in your mouth and then have to go back. And we were going down. I think the next game was against Bethel on the road. And Bethel was a super talented you know, football team. They were defending conference champs from the year prior. And, you know, we played we played one of our best games of the year and, and one of our best games in recent memory in our program. You know, when we went down on the road against Bethel and you know, it was one of those things where it was going to go one way or the other, and it ended up being a little bit of a wake-up call for us. And we went down and had a great game against a great team uh, in McKenzie, Tennessee, and and then we we really kept it rolling from there. So I, I've said to people throughout this process of looking back on last season, uh, certainly we wish we were undefeated. Certainly we wish we had won two more games. Uh, but it was a phenomenal year, and even though I wouldn't want to go back and lose that game against Reinhardt, I think that that was uh, a catalyst for us to move forward as a, as a team. And uh, then we ran the table in the Mid-South Conference, and, and the Mid-South Conference is really tough. So uh, I felt like it was a, a great step stepping stone for us as a program. We, you know, we had that that off week in the playoffs for the first time, and you know, then we got a chance to to get Baker at our place, and and we played really well that day. And and then we had a chance to get Indiana Wesleyan at our place. And I tell you, Indiana Wesleyan was as talented a team as we played all year. And uh, we played we played really well that day. We had a great great day on defense. A couple big defensive scores. Just phenomenal atmosphere here at the stadium. And. And then all of a sudden we were, you know, back in the semifinals for the first time, I think, in, in 10 or 11 years in our program. So uh, it was a, it was a great year for us. And uh, we all know the goals that we want to have uh, and where we want to go. And we want to win the whole thing, just like everybody. But uh, one thing I've learned through going into year 15, you better not take winning for granted. And, uh, you know, winning a national championship is the goal for, for every program out there. But, man, when, when you win and, and you win a conference championship and you get to play in the playoffs and those things, you better not take it for granted. And 10, 12 years ago, I, I had a little bit of a different feel for that. But, uh, you know, I'm really proud of our guys and we're excited to see if we can take the next step. You know, Coach, I, I know that, the, the phrases out there with age comes wisdom. And I don't agree with that with age comes age. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm of the belief that, you know, God gives us wisdom, but with age does come experience often mm -hmm. and that will help along the way. That experience can, can help you grow and change that perspective. I know I, with, with that too, you know, uh, coach on a personal note, you, you're not only the head football coach, you're the director of athletics as well. And I would just ask about that is how, how is that going now? Is that, is that something that, 
is, is just uh, it just goes right along with the coaching, or is it the additional duty? I mean, it 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 adds a little bit more on the plate, I'm sure. Yeah, it, it does add a little bit more, and and you know we we took this on, and you know when we had an opening in our department, and kind of went through a process where our president handled this in a in a manner because of the timing of it that was drawn out a little bit because our our previous athletic director had left just before the start of the 20 uh, 23 24 school year and our president wanted to give us a little bit more time to run a proper search well what happened within that is it allowed me time to process my interest in that opportunity and uh, you know the the position wasn't officially posted until really late in the season um, so I had time to process that I had time to, to focus fully on the football season last year and also you know get my head around if this was was a, a challenge and an opportunity that I wanted to submit my name for obviously I ended up choosing to do that and then we ran through a, a elongated search process through the spring semester. And really, it didn't become final with a final decision and, a, and an offer and a hiring until right at the end of spring football. So selfishly, from a personal standpoint, that timing of when I also assumed those duties was pretty good because for a head coach, you know, you, you leave spring football. Uh, for me, I... I certainly recruit, but I don't go on the road a lot for recruiting these days, uh, which is a nice head coach uh, privilege sometimes. Um, so it was good timing for me to to really take that on as we were ending the semester and going into the summer. And that has allowed me a little bit more opportunity to handle some of those athletic director duties in addition to the head coach duties. And you know, helping me learn to delegate better and better, uh, hopefully every day and every week. And, and, you know, I'm excited about the opportunity to, to lead our department and, and impact more you know, students on our campus and, and more of our coaches. Well, I want to add to to what you've heard, I'm sure, already. Congratulations on the gig there. And I know that, that you have a lot to offer the students beyond just the football department as well, too. So congratulations on that, Coach. Looking ahead to, to 24 on the football field then, on the offensive side of the ball, Garrick Slunaker is coming back. Darius Neal is coming back. I know there are a number of others coming back. I know you'll mention them in just a moment. But uh, two names that really headlined – uh, your program last year and just were fantastic on the field. And I know it had to make a difference. Tell us a little bit about the offense in 24. Yeah, I think we got a chance to take a big step forward. Um, you know, we, we had a really good offensive line a year ago and, you know, some of those guys were seniors and some of those guys were underclassmen who were back for us, but certainly we relied on that offensive line and on Darius Neal uh, behind them. And, there were times where we had phenomenal blocking and Darius was the uh, was the beneficiary of that. And then there's certainly times where Darius is his own blocker. And uh, it's fun when you can hand the ball off to a guy like that. And even sometimes when that crease may not be there, that, that guy can make something happen with that. And Darius is Darius is one of those guys. That's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, but Darius had a phenomenal year, all American and, and, you know, breaking program records and, really one of the most storied historic programs in NAI history. When you talk about a guy who's breaking season records and those types of things for touchdowns, I mean, that's, that's hard to do in a program like ours with as long as we've been around. So, you know, we're excited that he's back and, you know, Garrick had a really solid year. Garrick was in his second year as the, as the main starter. And I think as we moved into spring, and, you know, hopefully moving into this fall, I'd like to think that we're going to be back to a little bit more of a balanced uh, situation for just from a standpoint of being able to keep people honest in the passing game. Because as we went through last season, uh, you know, we were running the ball really, really well as we got into the heart of the heart of the deal. And, and Darius was having a phenomenal year and, and probably got a little bit more uh, run heavy than we would have liked. We're not against running the ball. We just want to keep people honest. So. I feel like our receiving core is going to be a big feather in our cap this year. I think Garrick's uh, continued development and experience is, is going to go a long way. And then at the end of the day, you still got that All-American running back standing next to you. So I think we've got a chance to, to take a step forward in, in what we're doing 
Uh, but we've got some new faces that are going to show up. You know, we've got some younger guys in the tight end room and, and guys stepping up who were in reserve roles a year ago. We've got a couple linemen who who were in that two deep a year ago that are now going to be out there, uh, you know, getting a starting spot when, when we kick off against Montana Tech. And uh, so, you know, we've got some, some new faces, but that's just the ebbs and flows of college football. We're visiting now with Chris Oliver here on Midwest Sportsnet, where we talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. And I encourage you, please subscribe to the channel. It really does help, and and we appreciate that. And visiting with Coach Oliver, uh, Coach, the the Tigers last year, it was it was a, a solid defensive effort as well. And you had a number of players who you know compiled a lot of numbers that had senior next to their name. I know some of them were coming back, some of them were moving on. It's it's that time. Among those that are coming back, Chad Holleran, an all-Commonwealth all team in, in more, yeah. more recent uh, awards he had, but he was an All-American as well on, on linebacker core for you. Tell us a little bit about your defense in 24. Yeah, well, our, our defense, you know, with all the accolades that, that Darius Neal running back and, and those things happen, I mean, I would tell you our defense has, has carried us and been a huge part of us winning the conference championship a year ago. I think we've been one of the top defenses in the country, and – and uh, we're really excited about you know what those guys do on that side of the ball and 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 how they have carried us for sure. Uh, Chad Holler's a special guy. Uh, we're really glad he's back for for his extra year. And uh, there's some people who are tired of hearing his name uh, being called and, and kind of get to that point where the the COVID and extra years and all those things are starting to run out. But you know, Chad is a is a special guy in the middle of our defense. And, I think we've got a chance to, to be pretty darn good up front. Uh, I think our, our defensive line and, and linebackers, I think we're, we're pretty darn experienced up there. And, and you know, we had, some, we had some good depth in the secondary a year ago. Now we had some guys that graduated out of that secondary and some guys who were phenomenal players. And, you know, Kyron Simpson and Devon Starks and, and, and some of those other guys back there that, uh, you know, that were just great, great players for us. So we're going to have some new faces here and there for sure. Uh, but I think we've got uh, some key, key contributors who are back with with a lot of snaps under their belt uh, who are going to hopefully help us take those next steps, get some of those younger guys moving along and, and get those reps under their belt. But as I alluded to when we talked about, uh, you know, the offense, uh, you know, we start out right away against a, a tough, tough opponent up in up of Montana. So there's not much time to ease into anything uh, with our schedule this year. I do want to talk about that schedule in a moment because it's well, it needs to be. It needs its own segment. It may need its own video. I'm not sure, yeah. but uh, it, it definitely needs its time. Special teams, really quickly, Coach Drew Raider last year, eight for ten field goals, fifty three of fifty four extra points. Uh, just a, a solid, very stable effort right there. Tell us a little bit about special teams. Yeah, it's something we we really work on hard in our program, and you know everybody wants to talk about special teams and those things. And I think that we probably work on it as much as anyone at our level. It's a big reason why we, you know, why we've been successful and, and Drew has been a part of that. And, but all those other parts that go into holding and snapping and attention to detail with the techniques and the schemes and, and all those things. So I'm talking a little bit broad generalization, but if you spent time in our program, you would see that that is something that we, we do spend a lot of time on. And I, I think our coaches, that is an area where I delegate an awful lot uh, on the special teams game to our assistant coaches. And, and we've got some guys who really take ownership of that and have done a phenomenal job over the year. And and, and Drew has, has been a big part of our success. Drew had a great year last year. We're, we're excited that he's back and, and ready to go for this next year. And we're excited to have some other guys who are going to compete with him uh, and push him as well. You know, and try and try and take that. We'll we'll see how that goes. You know, you talk about the elevation and all that stuff. You talk about going to Mile High Stadium in, in Denver. So, they are guys are excited to see you know the guys who get to travel to Montana Tech. How how uh, that ball flies in pregame warm up and and all that good stuff as well. Let's let's go into that schedule now. And and being the the head football coach and the athletic director, there really is no place to point for who put the schedule together than the person in the other window in this video. So I, it, it's on you. And really, Coach, I, I don't know that there is a tougher schedule in the country 
than what you all have. I mean, Mid-South, as it is, we know it's a very tough conference. It's going to be uh, brutal to get through the league. But you start off with three consecutive road games. We, we, you mentioned Montana Tech. Love the intersectional matchup, by the way. Absolutely. I, I think that's incredibly cool to have. And it, it's not a Division One. hey, we have our conference on both coasts. I mean, it's, it's a true intersectional game against teams no. that were in the playoffs last season. So uh, props to you for getting that matchup there at Montana Tech. Then you go at Pikeville, former conference rivalry, now in two different conferences, but a tough yeah. opponent there at on the road. And then you go FCS at Alabama A&M. Those are your first three games, which, by the way, the Montana Tech game on a Thursday night. Love that, too. think that's a fantastic way to open things up. And then it'll be a bye week before the Reinhardt game this time. Yeah. After, so uh, that's I'm sure that's nice for you. But yeah. that's your first home game, September 28th. First time the folks in Georgetown get a chance to see you all at home this year. Tell us a little bit about that schedule, Coach. Yeah, it's uh, – I mean – the short answer is yes. I, I do think it's probably the toughest schedule in the country at our level, and, and you know there's ebbs and flows to all these conferences. And I was telling someone earlier today, you know, you get a lot of publicity with you know someone leaves the Big Ten or joins the Big Ten and movement in the SEC, and to a certain extent, those things are going on at the, the quote unquote small college levels too. You just may not hear about them as much. And then right now we're in a dynamic in the Mid South where. Uh, you know, adding games and, and those scheduling alliances, you know, you, you have those changes that go through. And, and this was just a year where we were in a challenging position to fill out our schedule. Uh, and then you're coming off a year where you finished in the top four in the country and went 10 and two. And it's a lot harder to get games when you're 10 and two than when you're two and two and whatever. Uh, I'll tell you that. So um, it's one of those things where we, we had to kind of search high and low and, and Montana Tech had put it out there that they were looking for a game. And we knew that for a little bit before we ended up agreeing to it. I said, well, that's not a realistic thing. We're just not going to do that. And finally, we got a point where, you know, we, we got on the phone and, and we worked some things out and, and agreed to do that. We felt like it would be a really great experience for both programs. And, and our guys are excited. I'm sure their guys are excited. So it's not exactly how you draw it up is, is flying to Montana for, for week one. But I think we're excited about the opportunity. And I can tell you, like, we're going to have our hands full right there um, playing at their place, night game. I mean, it's, it's going to be a test, and, and we know it. And then you come back, and we've got this crossover deal with the Appalachian uh, Athletic Conference. Well, it just so happens that we play the two best teams in the Appalachian Athletic Conference in Pikeville and, and Reinhardt. So you get two games sort of randomly within the conference. Well, we, we have the top two teams uh, that we get to play uh, sandwiched around uh, you know the, the FCS game against Alabama A&M, which we really took – from a standpoint of trying to get to that tenth game, so uh, you're right. Uh, it it was it was me who, who ended up filling it out. Some of those things were a little bit out of our control, but but we did agree to everything, and we knew it was going to be a tough road to hoe. And uh, you know we're looking forward to it, but it, it's going to be a challenging, challenging year. And you know in our program we talked about going one and zero, and we got ten games, but we're going to go one at a time, and and uh, we're going to give it give it our darndest. Well, we're going to watch all season long right here on Midwest Sportsnet. We're going to be following you, Coach, and, and it should be a fun ride throughout the season. And we wish success to you, success to you and to the Tigers. And, and again, congratulations on the new opportunity as the athletic director as well. Coach Chris Oliver from Georgetown, thank you so much for taking some time for us today and previewing the 24 season here on the Summit. Yeah, thank you, Joe. We appreciate all your coverage of our, of our level. we got a great level of football, and we appreciate you covering it. <laughs>